two different scenes about 11 miles apart, but it all started here. People are fed up with gun violence across the country, and some are taking their fight to the people who make the guns themselves. That storm surge is coming. As you can see, my hat just blew off. The conditions are only getting worse, so bad that some units have been marked as unsafe, just like this one. Look at what's left in this rubble. Everything from a washer and dryer, and follow me along here. You can see a tractor and just a bunch of scrap metal, just to show you how hot and how intense this fire was. Unfortunately, families living there say not much has changed. Take a look at this damage. Just within this window, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullet holes. Looks like I'm standing in a pond, but right now I'm in someone's backyard. This is David Brenner's office during normal business hours, but the door's locked, lights are out, and there's still things inside. 12,000 tons of garbage in this pit right here. Now in that claw, there's enough fuel to power an average household for two and a half months. This map confirms what we feared. High concentrations of red tide in Northern Lee and Charlotte counties. First, we took samples from the Caloosahatchee River. And then we mixed in some hydrogen peroxide. Timed it ourselves. It added another 20 minutes onto our commute. She says she called 911 twice, but had to physically walk down the street and bring police back to her home. We had the chief and the sheriff out here earlier who also did this. They had a little bit of a friendly competition going on. As for me, I'm just trying to get through this shot right now. We're closely monitoring the shooting in Jacksonville. A shooter opened fire on a video game tournament this afternoon, killing two others and taking his own life. Eleven other people got hurt, but they are stable. And the support of Senator John McCain continues to pour in. The longtime fixture in American politics passed away yesterday. Flags are flying at half staff across the country. People are laying flowers and flags at a Phoenix funeral home today. McCain served in Congress for 36 years and spent five years as a POW. Fort Myers Boy shows the true meaning of giving back. He collected nearly five times his weight in food to donate to a local food pantry. Five-year-old Brantley Garcia set up a peanut butter and jelly drive at his school. And Hawaii is putting itself back together after Hurricane Lane. The storm swept over the islands and left behind a lot of destruction. Check out all this damage left from a landslide. And breaking tonight, the man who stole and crashed a plane late last night is identified. Officials say Richard Russell took the passenger plane in Seattle before plummeting to the earth. Investigators are working to piece together what drove him to steal an empty plane and crash it into the ground. Breaking news, the SWAT team is getting ready to end its roadblock around a home where a standoff suspect was just arrested. Meanwhile, officials around the area didn't take any chances with today's protests. The University of Virginia's Medical Center is now back open after going into lockdown. This man in the middle is known for fighting against child sex abuse. He even helped run a charity to help campaigns against it. But investigators just arrested him for trying to have sex with kids. And Chipotle is still trying to win back your heart. This time, they're doing it with bacon. I can't reach our engine is out. I'm going down. I'm going down. When the plane went down, we heard three loud bangs. Plane upside down, loud cops, firefighters, ambulance everywhere. Witnesses and neighbors say the impact shook the ground and rattled telephone poles when a plane tumbled down Miramar Street. There were sparks flying and smoke going, you know, a little 4th of July after the fact. Witnesses say the pilot was on the ground, traumatized by what just happened. I asked him, you know, do you, like, are you okay? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm fine, just where, where am I? And I was like, you're in Cape Coral, you just crashed. And um, then he looked at me like, you know, really positively. He was obviously in shock. Others also rushed to the pilot, who they found bleeding and cut up. Can't get the image on my, my mind. They say he looked to be okay, but many are still in disbelief. When we finally realized it was a plane that came down, we were like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. How could he be so low? How did, what did he hit? He hit the poles, I guess, and that's what flipped him over. So, very, very scary. Now, we've seen a wave of people coming in and out of here today. Some just learning about the crash and others making routine checks, trying to get back to their homes and businesses. Count on Wink News to stay on top of this story and check on that pilot's condition. For now, we're live in Cape Coral. Taylor Basaki, Wink News. Now, you can still see the damage left behind. Check out this cracked glass door, and if you follow it all the way down, you can see the bullet hole that went through some of these businesses. And just within the last hour, police released these photos of a car that may be connected to those fired shots. It's a dark colored sedan that drove through the parking lot at the same time as the shooting. Four shootings in almost a week. 
three since Tuesday. I know everybody's thinking, you know, there has been a kind of like an uptick in shootings. We have absolutely no reason to believe that any of these are related. Now four men are dead, three other people are injured, and the community is on edge. I'm sad. I'm very sad because this is our place and we live here and scared of our safety too. At one point we were having where you couldn't get through a seven-day week without gunfire of some sort. It was that bad. And then here we actually had months and there was none. And, and that's a huge difference. If it's going to start up again, I'm going to apply pressure again. Kristen Streck lives in the Dunbar neighborhood that had two shootings, one on Davis Court and one on Thomas Street, within days of each other this week. She says her neighborhood is no stranger to the police. I've seen a lot of gun violence here. Worried more may come to her neighborhood once again. This might be you know, between gang members, or this might be um, retaliation. Police say the public is not in any danger, and all of these cases are targeted incidents. They say they're working with deputies on these cases, but right now no arrests have been made. Live in Fort Myers, Taylor Basaki, Wink News. Now, I just downloaded a generic barcode scanning app. Let's go check it out. That's your name? Yes, it is. And that's your flight information? Yes, it is. Um, how did you do that? Your personal information, all in the palm of a thief's hand. Me or you can just download this if you leave this anywhere and I can get your information. Wow. Because all boarding passes have a QR code or barcode, all it takes is a quick scan of a pass left behind. We found passes in the trash, even some on the floor. Yeah, I've taken it actually and thrown it in the garbage right at the airport. I wouldn't be too happy knowing that someone knows where I travel to. Revealing everything from your name, flight information, and a frequent flyer number. Yeah, it's weird. I now have all your information. I know. Good. Well, that, <laughs> I'll keep it secret. That's okay <laughs> with you, but I don't know about the rest of these folks. Allowing thieves to possibly access your account, steal your information, even change your plans. I'm actually shocked to find out that this is this is capable of, you know that someone is actually capable of getting this information. So as you travel to your destination, you may want to think twice about what you do with this. I'm going to actually keep this and shred it, not throw it in the garbage. It gives me a great perspective on what I should do with it, which is keep it really close to me. At RSW, Taylor Basaki, Wink News, now.